All right, everyone, I'm back for um, another Saturday uh, open science discussion. I have three articles that I'm going to read. They're all short. Uh, I, I think what I did last week was was kind of cool where folks commented uh, in the chat and I kind of bounced off uh, those comments. I'm going to make an announcement over on. Uh, let me see. If I can see myself. Yeah, I'm going to make an announcement on the original Big Discussions 76 channel that I'm doing this, and then I'll play the intro, and uh, then I'll uh, start. Uh, what's going on? What's going on, Rodney? Uh, give me a sec here. Uh, if you're coming in, please hit that like button. Let's see. For anyone interested, I would say please join us, but you know whoever, you know whoever this stuff organically resonates with, that's who it resonates with. Anyway, let me go back to my channel so I can watch all of the real time data come in. Yeah, so same deal as last week. I'm gonna play the intro. I'll get this started. I'll uh, I have three articles, uh, two relating to the. The world event, which seems to be ending um, in my office, we're going back into the office. We're going back into um, person to person work to a small degree. Um, and when I read these articles, I'm, I'm going to talk in code a little bit. I'm not going to say what some of the words are. I'm going to use alternative words for obvious reasons. And then the last article is a aerospace astronomy uh, related articles. So I'm going to play the intro and I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey, please hit that like button. Likes are free. Uh, I have over a thousand followers over here. I'm sorry, subscribers on YouTube. They're called subscribers, but I got to get the watch hours up. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the other side of the intro.
Uh, Rodney says, I love the show intro, Doc. Yeah, you know what? That's that's uh, shout out to my brother, Amal Dunbar. He's not watching this. He's probably resting somewhere because my brother works really hard during the week. But my brother knows a lot about media and he taught me how to use Filmora Wondershare. So that was just putting a montage of pictures together. But I think the music, that music, um, there's a lot of free music available uh, on online if you're a YouTube content creator. And I love ambient music like that. So I was searching through a database that I'm familiar with uh, to find free tracks. And, and that one is called uh, Elf, uh, Elf Meditations. I think that's what it's called. But it goes perfect with those, those images of cells and exoplanets and computer chips and the James Webb telescope. So there we are. Thank you, Rodney. Um, everyone, please get the likes up. Um, I don't have a super chat over here. If you want to make a donation to the channel, uh, my cash app and PayPal, let me slow down. My cash app and PayPal are below in the description box and they're right here. Uh, and please, if you're new, uh, please uh, subscribe. Uh, so what I'm going to do today uh, is I'm going to read uh, three... I love crowd chamber. Is that a uh, is that an artist or is that a um, a song in itself? Let me know, Rodney. So I'm gonna um, have three articles I'm gonna read, and then uh, depending upon how much participation is, I'll hang out for a little bit longer. Uh, Rodney, if you're, if you're still here and you have something to say about what I read, because you'll probably have something to say. But when you come up, you might have to speak in code <laughs> because you know you know what's happening. Uh, the algorithm is searching for, for certain words, and if it sees certain words and terms. So, please hit the likes. Uh, please consider, some of you have already done this, like Isada. Isada, thank you for stopping through. Always great to see you. Please consider joining the Big Words uh, LLC newsletter. I am a writer uh, in addition to a YouTube content creator. Um, I have two blogs. I have to upload something on the second blog soon. Uh, and I have my book project that I'm working on. And I was actually looking for editors this morning, but I'm, I'm a writer and a YouTube content creator. And I have a lot of content coming out. And this is just a way to keep up with, with, with all of that uh, for those who are really interested in me as a content creator. Uh, so with that, let, let's jump in because I want to, I'm actually meeting up with uh, Officer Faulkner later on for some uh, cigars and liquor. So I have to drive all the way up to uh, the Baltimore area, which is fun, but I need some time to decompress. I was up early this morning working on things, and I did a, a sports stream on my sports channel earlier. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump in. So I have three articles I'm going to read. They're, they're not long, um, and I'll be speaking in code. A little bit, so I'll be substituting words on the fly for obvious reasons. YouTube, even if the video's two to three years old, if it if they think it violates a guideline, they'll go in and they'll snip it, they'll take it down, and you'll get this um random email from them saying, "Hi, so and so, <laughs> we just wanted to let you know that we removed your video." Because it um, because it violated this or it violated that, and you're kind of like, wait a minute, you, you took my video away, you know? But but it's just it's just what they do. Let me see if I can get rid of this. I don't know why this always this website always does this, but it's very it's very um, disconcerting uh, when that happens because. That, that, that's one of the reasons why if you're doing live streams like this, you have to back it up. You have to download the file shortly after you get finished because once they they take it away, that's it. It's gone. So if it's, if it's a pre-record, you, you probably already have the file in your records. But if, if it's a, a live stream like this and you're talking about something kind of on the edges, then you better download it and save it because once it's gone, it's gone. They actually took my channel down. Um, they took this channel down midstream 
last spring because I was talking about something and I was trying to share a link in the chat and I got an error message and I was like, what's going on? Why can't I share this? And then I went to my YouTube channel and it, the screen, it was like snow. It was like this video has been removed. And then I got an, uh, you know, one of those emails saying, oh, we, we removed the video and we took your channel down. So you can, you can contest it. And fortunately, they were gracious enough to put the channel back up. So that's why this channel is still here. But, but you know, you realize I'm still a small YouTuber and st I'm still a young YouTuber. Some of these guys, by the way, Ron Wills is coming over to my original channel on Thursday night. Ram is a, is, an, is a veteran YouTube content creator. Some of the, I can name some other names that are veteran YouTube content creators, but when your channel gets removed and you've been at it and you have like a library of at least 30 to 40 to 50 videos, you realize, wow, that's a lot of work that just got flushed down the toilet. So it's, it's a really, really big deal. Anyway, without further ado, Again, this, uh, no super chat. If you guys want to make a donation, that information is there. This article is from NBC News, and it says there's an uptick in U.S. immunizations, and older Americans are the reason. I'm using a different word besides the V word. Oh, that, that by the way, guys, that background that that's a um, that's a depiction of a black hole. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite pictures. I uh, I volunteered for a while at the Arlington Planetarium. Come on, StreamYard. This poor computer, I, I probably need to <clears throat> try to free up some memory because it's moving a little slow. Let me, I want to show you guys the black hole. But it's it's kind of doing its thing right now. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Shout out to uh, Glendon Cameron. I I feel like I should get a backup unit, a backup rig, just in case something happens to this one. And I'm about I'm about due for an upgrade. Or I'm about due for getting another unit because you never want um, all of this is technology based and you never want your technology to go down and you can't use it. You can't stream or even blog or anything. But anyway, guys, the background image for this is actually this. It's a uh, it's a black hole. This is one of my favorite images. I volunteered at the David M. Brown Arlington Planetarium for a number of years and I did some, I've done some aerospace related content here and astronomy related content here. And I want to do more, but I just love this picture. It shows a black hole, which is also known as a singularity, but it also shows uh, the gravitational field around what we believe a black hole or a singularity is um, in terms of space time. So this is one of my favorite, favorite pictures. Um, and if you guys ever saw the movie uh, Event Horizon, with Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill, you'll know that black holes were a major part of that plot, but that's a different story for a different day. Anyway, there's an uptick in US immunizations and older Americans are the reason. Okay. After months of gradual declines, uh, the contagion immunizations are on the rise again Average daily doses have uh, increased uh, each of the previous nine days through Thursday. The longest sustained increase in immunizations. And there's another word I could use for that. Since November 2021. Since March 30th, my mom's birthday, immunizations uh, have uh, jumped from an average of approximately 200,000 um pokes per day to more than 450,000 adults aged 65 and older appear to be driving the immunization surge according to the NBC news analysis of data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention 
the CDC authorized second immunizations for those 50 and older last week, provided they had already received their first uh, poke and were boosted for more than uh, for more than four months ago. Uh, an NBC News analysis showed that fewer than half of those eligible have gotten their first poke. The CDC has not yet published specific data on second pokes. Immunizations are up from uh, a late March low to fewer than 180,000 pokes per day, but are still uh, far below the peak of 3.3 million pokes set in April 2021. They are also it's Facebook messenger they are also well below the average of 1 million or more uh the country tallied from november to that year of january this is not the first time that uh pokes second poke second pokes have led to an increase in the immunization rate immunizations rose last fall when uh, second pokes were first rolled out to eligible adults along with immunizations for children five to 11 years of age. Let me take a look at YouTube. You guys are still commenting. So the video is still, the stream is still going. Okay, very good. So that's the first article. So uh, Rodney, I know you're you're um, on the front lines of this. So if you come up again, remember we're gonna, we're gonna use, we're gonna use um, synonyms, synonyms for this. Uh, the second article is related. Please hit the like button if you're just coming in. Uh, once again, if you want to donate to the channel, my Cash App and PayPal are there. I don't have a super chat over here. I plan to make some more content on the kidney. I want to talk about... Um, organ donations and kidney transplants, but just time, you know, and, and, and what goes into finding a match and what goes into being a match for organ donors, but just, you know, with time, science videos are cumbersome to make because you have to be accurate and you want to put enough pictures and you want to make the, you want to put enough pictures in it. You want to make it digestible for a general audience. So, but I have two videos on the kidney that uh, that needs some more love. So if you guys haven't watched those, please like, please watch those. Give those a like. Leave a comment. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, who have died over the years from kidney disease, and uh, there are a lot of people who unfortunately have to go um, and be on dialysis, which is very very painful and very very laborious. Okay, shameless plug there. Okay, this one is entitled uh, "The Contagion." Nation records. 14,944 new cases, 31 fatalities in the last 24 hours. This was published yesterday at 9.14 p.m. Interesting. This was written by Shah Alam. I don't know if this is from overseas or uh, looks like it was written by C.T. Nar uh, Fatiha. Uh, Paradas, Paradas. So this might be from overseas, but I found this when I was scouring the web this morning. This might not be the United States. Uh, the nation records 14,840 new uh, contagion infections in the last 24 hours, marking a stabilizing trend of cases recorded below uh, 20, the 20,000 mark in recent days. The Klang Valley also recorded 8,426 cases in the last 24 hours, retaining much of a higher transmission trend compared to other states. Yeah, this has got to be India. I'm going to read the whole thing just, you know, so that we know what's happening in other parts of the world. I've, I've wondered if the world event is over. Certainly, the news cycle has moved on to other things, uh, but we're, we're, you know, I started, I started it. We're here, so let's just finish it. Mm. 
Meanwhile, the Klang Valley and Parak also have the highest numbers of um, expirations caused by the contagion with the record amount of 86 and 75 deaths, respectively, in the last 14 days. In terms of fatalities, the nation recorded 31 new deaths new deaths, including six brought in dead cases in the last 24 hours, with the total cumulative, cumulative death at 35,258 since the world event began. Currently, there are also 185,439 active cases with 154 um, 1,880 or 97.8% of them placed under home quarantine. Out of that number, uh, 3,012 are hospitalized with 206 of them treated in intensive care units. Currently, there are 109 cases that require um, assisted breathing. The nation also recorded 4 million 271,316 contagion cumulative cumulative cases since the since the world event began in terms of immunization rate lemba clang uh, continues to lead with a 95.5 percent followed by Pu, pulau penang and the jerry assembly ugh. i think these are all states in india with 86.4 percent and 84.8 percent respectively malaysia has thus uh, far administered uh, 69,000, no, 69 million, 138,021 doses of immunizations. So other, other, um, I think this is helpful to know what's happening around the world. Uh, our news cycle has moved on to other things. And I've wondered, is the world event over? I don't think so. But, you know, uh, you have to keep economies going. And uh, some folks want to travel internationally. So this is good to know what's happening on the other side of the world. So uh, those all deal with the world event. So this last one is going to deal with aerospace. And then I will drop the link in in case anyone wants to come up. Rodney's here. Uh, so you might you might have some things to say. Yeah, Rodney, that's a strange thing. And, and it's like, okay, let's move on. Let's get back to, well, I mean, we all want to get back to, quote, unquote, the way things used to be. But it's um, maybe people are just tired of hearing about it as well. And you have a conflict over in Eastern Europe as well. So, and inflation, gas prices, those kinds of things. And we're arguably in a recession right now. So, the news cycle that keeps going and going and going and going. If you haven't, please hit the like button. Uh, this last one's going to deal with aerospace, and then I'll throw the link in the chat. Because this is a science channel, and it's not just the world event <laughs> channel. So let's see. Let's, let's talk some aerospace and astronomy. Elon Musk and Space... Elon Musk and SpaceX are... Uh, they've been cranking along regardless of what's been going on with the rest of the world. So, um, and apparently I follow Dr. Jordan Peterson. I like, I like listening to him. Apparently he's had some talks with Elon Musk. I don't know if those are public, but, uh, I was watching a Jordan Peterson video yesterday and, um, he and Elon Musk have some very, very interesting discussion points about, you know, the world and what's going on and just, current events. This one is entitled SpaceX launched uh, four astronauts into the International Space Station for Axiom Space in the first ever all private mission. Okay. So left to right, that's uh, Axiom One astronauts, Mark Pathy, Larry Connor, Michael uh, Lopez, Algeria, and Eton Stebe. So all men. Those are all men. Okay. Let's see if I missed any of the text. Nope. 
this uh, starts with bullets. Commercial um, aerospace firm Axiom Space launched the first private astronaut mission to the ISS Friday. The four-man civilian crew was blasted into orbit by a SpaceX crew Dragon spaceship. Uh, according to NASA, the astronaut team will spend more than a week on the ISS. SpaceX uh, has made history by launching the first all-private crew of astronauts to the International Space Station Friday on behalf of a commercial space commercial aerospace firm Axiom Space. See, guys, reading is fundamental. I never would have known that there was an Axiom Space unless I read this article. Um, are you guys brave enough to go up in a, in a, a, a spaceship? I don't know that I would be um, after experiencing uh, the Challenger explosion in the mid 80s and just other accidents. But what do you, how about you guys? Would you guys be, be brave enough to do that? The Axiom um, One Missions new, I'm sorry, the Axiom One Missions crew comprised of Michael Lopez, Al Algeria, Larry Connor, Mark Pathy, and Aiton Stibby, Stib, uh, who were blasted into orbit uh, by by a SpaceX Dragon crew spaceship from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Florida, at um, 11, 17 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time per NASA. That, I'm sorry, that read kind of weird. Um, what a historic launch. Thank you to the dedicated teams at NASA who have worked tirelessly, tirelessly to make this mission a reality. Uh, NASA Chief Bill, Bill Nelson said, he added, congratulations to Axiom, SpaceX, and the Axiom One crew for making this first private mission to the International Space Station a reality. According to the space agency, the astronaut team will spend more than a week on the ISS carrying out scientific research, outreach, and commercial activities. NASA broadcasted the docking of the SpaceX capsule hatch opening and welcome ceremony live starting at 5, 5.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, on Saturday via this link. I was asleep when that happened. NASA, um, no, they will broadcast it. So they haven't done it yet. Or maybe, they, no, no, they did. Because this is dated yesterday, I believe. The four men each have varying roles during the mission. Lopez Allegeria, a retired NASA astronaut and Axiom vice president, will serve as the commander of the flight. Connor, an activist investor, will serve as the mission pilot, while Pathy, a Canadian investor, and Stibby, or Stib, an Israeli businessman, will act as mission specialists. We're almost done. Uh, Insider previously reported that a seat on the historic flight cost crew members $55 million each. Wow. This journey is the culmination of long hours of training, planning, and dedication from the crew and the entire Axiom Space team, our partners at SpaceX, and of course, a credit to NASA's vision to develop a sustainable presence in low Earth orbit, said Michael Safrandini, the president and CEO of Axiom Space. In the most recent update of the mission, Axiom Space tweeted early Saturday, the hashtag AX1 astronauts and Caramel the dog just checked in as they pass over the southern tip of South America. They are preparing to dock to the at space station. And then finally, Axiom Space is due to launch a second commercial mission to the International Space Station between the fall of 2022 and late spring 2023. Record breaking um, astronaut Peggy Whitson will serve as commander of the flight while John Schaffner will act as mission pilot read the original article on Business Insider. So the link for all three of these articles are below in the description box. Let's see, we are at 30 minutes. If um, anyone wants to come up, I'll drop the link right now. Guys, remember, we gotta use synonyms for certain words. Okay.
And if anyone uh, wants to donate to the channel, my Cash App and PayPal are here. And guys, you know what? You can come up and talk anything science related or science and technology related if you want to. If you want to talk about AI, if you want to talk about quantum computing, I don't care. I'll keep this going for another 30 minutes. Um, if folks want to come up, if not, I'll shut down and uh, make a late, late, late breakfast. Does anyone want to come up? The link is right there. Oh, let me make sure this is still streaming. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 YouTube, um, didn't come and get it. Okay. Um, then I will, while I, while I wait and keep the stream going, I will, uh, read through some of your comments. Again, you, if you want to come up and talk about black holes or talk about genetics or talk about, um, whatever, 5G, whatever, uh, I'll let this go just a little bit longer. If not, I'll, I'll shut down. Okay. Uh, Rodney says, uh, salute, Doc. Indeed. Please hit the like button. I love the intro. Isada came passing through. Greetings. Me too. I love um, Cryo Chamber. Giagami says, greeting Dr. Dunbar and all in the chat. AB Media, what's going on? AB? Can you hear me? Let's try. There you go. Professor Black Ops, what's going on? What's going on, bud? Hey, what's going on? What's on, what's on your minds today? Uh, doing some uh looking at a preview uh, build of uh, Microsoft's new uh, UI system. Uh, do you want to explain just briefly what that is for the non-tech people like myself? What what is UI? Oh well, user interface. But uh, this particular you know user interface is called uh, Maui. Uh, I believe it stands for multi-platform application user interface. It's basically designed to work on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, and the phones. Y you can write one program and it'll run anywhere and it'll give you, um, it actually gives you specific folders for each pl platform. Okay, so what's what's the advantage of that? What, 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 what's what's the, the novel aspect of that? Why are they doing this? Um, you can write a program once and run it on several devices, but but barely having to change any of your code except for platform specific stuff. Uh, that's a big deal in the uh, mobile industry because uh, each each uh, platform has their own uh, system for uh, writing apps for it, and it's difficult to keep the apps consistent between uh, platforms like you know, iOS and uh, Android, that's a big thing. That's a big problem. Um, that's why web apps were popular for a while in the uh, mobile space because uh, you keep it consistent. Now, there's, there's, there's big advantages to having a one UI platform at the native, at the actual native level so that it uh, work properly on each on each platform. That's a That's a big advantage to that. Okay, so let me see if I can summarize. So, so, we're, we're, so user interface. So, Androids and iPhones will be able to use the same, the same, you know, fill it, fill in for me where I'm, because I'm drawing a blank. That that that's that's the take on it. Androids and iPhones will be able to use the same platform or the same. Okay. Okay, I can explain this. <laughs> they'll they'll be able to use the same the, the the same application without little without um little changes in between without the difference without um big differences between the applications on one device or another 
the okay. same code base so you don't have to make changes so like you yes. said because when you because when you have to go from um like you said android to to apple's phone to those you don't have to make a change uh long story short i programmed for 20 years in the 80s where you have to do that manually so i, I know exactly what he's talking about i'm old so i know what he's talking about <laughs> what languages have you worked in probably c uh, assembly yeah i've done that in college um, my first bag was actually oracle forms reports i actually did a little cobol uh, my uh, full stack right now is java hibernate spring to an oracle database uh switching okay. off to aurora trying to get some of that cloud money java guy huh that's i'm old man that was one of the first big apps i'm old <laughs> java was before c sharp <laughs> i know i know so yep. uh professor black ops what's going on uh in your neck of the woods oh nice seeing you again doc oh man i was just uh since we were talking about uh space shuttle um um, my man Elon Musk did his Starlink uh, low orbit satellites for communications. I don't think a lot of people realize is Jeff Bezos about to launch his low orbit uh, satellites at the end of this year. So he's trying to duplicate what Elon Musk is doing. Um, I think they're trying to lock down uh, internet to uh, hard to reach places. And on top of that, of course, you can do a lot other communications. Some of that's going to be military uh, payloads in space. And I think Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos is about to take that over. I don't think people realize how much things uh, Amazon's got their foot print in. So, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so th they're both they both want to put low orbit satellites above the planet. Right? Well, Elon Musk already has his up already. Up. Um, Ukraine is actually using his for communications because. In the army, I'm trying to use the proper code words. Uh, Russia took all their communications out. So <laughs> Ukraine tweeted oh. Elon Musk and said, can we borrow, borrow your satellites? And they said, yes. Wow. <laughs> so just Google that. So um, the thing I thought, yeah, the thing I thought, is that too much power? Ukraine didn't ask the United States. They didn't ask Congress. They didn't ask president. They tweeted Elon Musk. What if he said no? <laughs> no, nah, you can't use my satellites, <laughs> right? So I thought that was an interesting part of on that doc. Just as long as World War III don't break out, I'm good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's already there from a cyber perspective. The first two months was a cyber. Uh, well, that was happening time. beforehand, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but but I don't think a lot yeah. of people realize people are teaming up because Anonymous, right? They're hacked to organization. They just jumped into the war to help Ukraine. Who are they taking orders from? Can they do what they want to do? If they want to do something bad and make a, a nuclear power plant explode, can they do that? They in the war for helping the cyber spot, but who's who orders? Who are they taking orders from? Yeah. So, Professor Black Ops, you said the first two months were a cyber. Yeah. War? What yeah. does that mean? Uh, they were going in there, taking out their uh, electronics, taking out their banking systems, cutting off their communications. That's why I had to write to Elon Musk because you cut off the army's communications, you, you can't yeah, do war. <laughs> So they were just taking stuff out. They were taking their infrastructure out. If you Google, they had this software to actually make computers. It actually made their hard disk actually crash and not work anymore, physically crash. So there was a ton of that out there. It was called the wiper. If you want to Google uh, wiper malware, you see it out there physically was destroying disk. So they were taking them out a couple months before the works. Because you can soften people up now because everybody depends so much on the Internet. And I don't think people realize that. Oh yes, anytime anytime you hear the word cloud, that means a server somewhere. Facts. The tool is a lot of the uh, your infrastructure, gas, water, a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff is connected to the internet. So if you do wiper malware, doc, I think that'll come up. If you wanted to share some, but yeah. So um, I just want to kind of uh, bring that to your audience. I don't know if a lot of people realize uh, <laughs> it was uh, kind of war on cyberspace. The nerds was taking care of business first. Before we put boots on the ground. Okay. Well, the United States years ago, we we endured a a, a massive uh, cyber attack, right? There's there's yeah. something with was it with uh? You remember what that was? Was it a nuclear? Was it a nuclear power plant, or was it 
our, okay. our, 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 our shipping or our water or something? But, well, it was two. They, they, uh, if you look, Russia was actually inside our electric grid for two years before we kicked them out. Somebody actually hacked a couple of water plants inside uh, Florida, and they were actually putting too much chlorine in the water t- until they figured it out. So there's been a number of smaller attacks. And uh, a lot of people don't realize, because I, I used to work for the Department of Defense, it's called uh, Winter, where the financial uh, industry um, does a cyber practice in case they get knocked out by cyber warfare. Because if you can't use your credit card, the millennials can't eat. <laughs> so most people what? go out. Most people, most kids don't use cash anymore, Doc. When I go to the supermarket, I, I pull out like cash. He's not necessarily wrong. He's not necessarily wrong I, about that. I, I know I'm not wrong. I know I'm not. Because I tease them. I work with 20 guys. One day the credit card couldn't work. They couldn't eat. I had to buy them lunch. Most millennials use debit cards for everything. I'm a cybersecurity professional. I had credit cards for practice. So I don't randomly use my credit card very often. Right? But that's just the... The nuance of PayPal, Cash App, every it's just so convenient. Most people don't carry cash. They think it's a security problem that they're going to get robbed. So and people or don't that realize. Is, or, or that is corny or that is old, you know. <laughs> yeah, two people don't realize is the United States wants you not to use class cash because it's easier to uh, uh, track you down, right? When you use cash, I can't figure out what you buy. I went mm-hmm. to the bank to put cash in my attorney's uh, account. The bank told me I couldn't push cash in her account. They do not accept cash unless you're putting it in your own account. Wow. The United, it's, and that's Chase Bank. That's a huge national bank. You can't go there and put cash in other people's account. So I had to go home and write a check <laughs> to put in her. But it's easier to it's easier to trace checks, right? You got check numbers, so it's easy to find out. The United States in 10 years is going to be cashless, I promise you. I'd be less than that, but yeah, we'll see. Facts, facts, facts. So, okay. wow. But, I, uh, I, I'm a millennial. I, I can confirm. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie to him. I, I like shopping with my debit card. I, I, I can't. No facts, man. I, I no can, shame. I can. I can. I, I cannot. I cannot dispute that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I want no to, but I can't dispute it. <laughs> no. I know no how to. I, I know how to use cash. Don't get me wrong, but no, uh, facts, facts. It's a convenient thing, and I think. The millennials are just brought up on electronics like that. They PayPal, cash, they're just more comfortable. I'm old school. I remember me, I got a money clip. <laughs> I'm that money clip life. But no, no shade to the millennials. It's just time to change. You know, um, it's just um, it's just it's just unique to me because I do cybersecurity, so I see people steal mm-hmm. money at will very easily. Now you said you're a Java guy. Are you on the current version or are you, are you using the older version? Uh, I, I don't do as much programming as I used to. Uh, long story short, I stretched over to cybersecurity because I make a lot more money. Just make they sure don't it's let safe, me, okay. Yeah, they, they don't let me touch computers very much anymore. I get upset. I do mostly paperwork now, but that uh, cybersecurity money is good. I get fat on that. <laughs> Shout out to cybersecurity. So, but I do do a lot of uh, secure coding with our development teams, check their price line. Uh, and if you look at... Um, Photography and all that. Yeah, if you look like Colonial Pipeline, right, that made people on the uh, West Coast not be able to get gas, and people were putting gas in trash bags, which was crazy. That was um, wow, an internal, is that bad? That, Oh, yeah, if you Google it, people were doing stupid stuff. But long story short, uh, Russia or China put some malware in somebody's code, and it got pushed out to, like, all the government agencies. So you got to secure your coding pipeline now. Mm. Okay, uh, we've been joined by uh, Rodney. Rodney, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Rodney? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, you good. Trying to adjust this. Uh, let's see. Let me just go back. How's that? Yeah, that's a... Uh, oh. Well, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Just when he had it up. Right. So the interesting thing that Rodney come back is now you got all these low level satellites. Are, are people securing them? Can you hack them? Elon Musk actually said that uh, he's locking down the satellites to make sure uh, foreign countries and nation state doesn't try to hack his satellites uh, since Ukraine is using them for their communication now. So. Uh, anything electronics, right? You got to try to secure and 
make sure you're doing encryption and keys and all that good stuff. Um, I think a lot of people take that for granted. Well, let me ask you guys this. Uh, all of our, our internet, is that going through satellites? Parts of it is. Parts of it's going underseas. Uh, Facebook owns an underwater cable to co connect to Europe. Uh, I think IBM has some underwater cables. Uh, some of that's going through um, satellites. Satellites are not fast as cables. So people have, if you Google uh, Facebook, they own their own underwater cable connecting the two continents. Wow. That makes sense. They got enough users. Uh, they they got to do something. Now they got enough money. <laughs> true. I was I was arguing with a couple of my young millennials. True. Yeah, they were saying Facebook was done. I was like, Facebook made $4 billion. You can't be done when you make $4 billion. Now, they're not the app of du jour. The young people on Instagram, Snapchat, and then what's the one everybody's dancing on? Hell, I can't even. Uh, TikTok? TikTok. You know, everybody TikTok, and I'm too old for that. But it's not the most uh, pretty app, but it's one of the most used ones. Yeah. Yeah, I can't fathom a line going under the ocean from one continent to, to the other. Oh yeah, Google it. Uh, Facebook drop, but it's about three or four that, and I think the government's getting warm. Uh, they getting a little concerned because those are all owned by private companies. Mm -hmm. So it's like Facebook could say, "No, you can't use my underwater cable." <laughs> so yeah, because they got money yeah. to drop those cables. Yeah, I'll be laughing at people talking about me. I can start my own Facebook and make it better. I'm like, okay, you want to do all what deal with all that server maintenance? All, all right. Yeah, Good luck to you, brother. Like <laughs> Yeah, they, no, they don't know. They don't know what YouTube. YouTube I don't even want to know what YouTube and Facebook spends on servers. Good lord! Oh yeah, Facebook's got forty-two thousand servers around the world. I don't think people understand the the architectural brilliance of uploading uh, stupid videos and how much hardware it does take. It how, how much memory that takes? Good. I probably upload about five or six terabytes of videos on my own yeah. channel. You, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've wondered where all this stuff goes, you know, and where, how do they store it all? It goes somewhere. I can tell you, it goes somewhere. They got <laughs> servers all around the world. Then they uh, copy them. So if somebody's close and want to see it, they get their own cash copy of it. And the, if, uh, since I do Java, uh, Netflix, they add a lot of custom code to open source to see what they do. So you can watch a Netflix uh, a movie around the world. That code is super impressive. Super impressive. Okay. Uh Rodney is back. Rodney? Yeah. What's going on? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, I um yeah, I, I want to uh to get in on uh on our our first topic and um I, and and uh the, the underreporting that's going on right now. Oh okay. um, it's still it, it it's still with us but uh the the will to to report it is uh is lacking um the thing that's going on with china right now is is pretty significant but um there's very little coverage on it if you if you want to go to twitter and look around um uh you know i think last time i looked into it it was six provinces uh, that were shut down and um that's uh, almost bigger than than when the when when the event originally started. Okay. Wow. That that's amazing because yeah, that's not good. Nobody's talking about it. Um, I was gonna cover it, but then I, I mean, I've had such a uh, such a fall off on on interest on it on my channel that I just left it alone, but I did send, I think I sent the article to you and um, I think I sent it to BGS also uh, where they were talking about it and the initial reports coming out. Um, one of the reporters that uh, the reporter on it said that uh, he had a sick feeling in his stomach, like when he first heard about the, the initial numbers and these numbers are bigger. Um, last month, or was it at the end of last month, um Hong Kong was at like 90% um infection rate if we could say what? that yes 90 Wait. 90 i think it was like 98% of all of Hong Kong was was infected 
Okay, six provinces are shut down and they've opened up a, an isolated uh, area in China where they are going to build a hospital and an also a recovery area. So everything will be, a, it'll be an all, um, all encompassing uh, effort. Stop shop. And uh, they're trucking people in and you cannot leave until you're cleared. So um, if that's not significant, I don't know what is. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wordsmith around this, but but efficacy, it, you, you know, you, 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 sometimes you you increase with uh, the ability to to transmit, you know, but but also isn't doesn't the efficacy in the the, the the well the virulence doesn't that go down the more transmissible it gets, or is that wrong? Um, let's see how I can put this. You still have instances of uh, we, we're still dealing with with the effects of long, the long uh, COVID. We're also um, dealing with um, uh, the spread of this new this new strain. Uh, I think it's up to like four people. It used to be the original strain was like two for every one infected. I think it was like two which would come off of that. I think it's four on this one. Um, so uh and the length of time that it takes i'll give you an example one one case that um that i uh that i can can kind of refer to is i mean it lasted over a month a month of intensive uh uh effort uh to try to get this person back to uh to to some semblance of uh, of normality and uh, during that time uh we didn't have any beds so this person was essentially being sent, you know, back, back uh, home to uh, to uh, treat himself symptomatically. Mm -hmm. So um, there, um, they're keeping everybody locked down so that they can try to uh, squash these numbers. But even though they're taking these people and they're transporting these these people out, they won't know until a certain amount of time transpires as to whether they infected other people. And those people infected other people, so it's an exponential um, situation. Oh dear! Mm -hmm. I mean, in a province. I mean, think about what we're talking about. We're talking about provinces, okay? Entire provinces are being shut down, and they're also um, got. They've gone back to um, almost like a shutdown, like. Um, like we were here, but like they were, they were a lot more intense than we were. Well, they've done that, you know, in these provinces, and um, they still have, they're still unable to get ahead of it. Wow, Ooh, boy! So, in other words, buckle up. Well, and then Fauci just made a statement. Uh, I think it was as of yesterday that mm -hmm. he expects it. At first, his first preliminary statements uh, last month the beginning of the last month was that it will not come here. Now at the end of this month, it'll come here. It well, will be expected here in, in the fall is what he's saying in the fall. But um, I think it may be before that. Yeah, me too. I don't, as, you, as, as you were talking, Rodney, I was just thinking if the current people in charge are thinking of restricting travel from that part of the world. But... Um, that will be smart. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go. I think I, I, I think I can kind of guess as to what's, <sighs> what's being advised, but um, the visibility of, of what's going on, uh, I don't think they want it to be visible. Um, I'll take, take my state, for instance, um, when uh, it was at its heaviest, and we were breaking records. We were breaking records like once or twice a week. And uh, then all of a sudden they just stopped reporting and then they lifted the mask mandates. Now, I said on my channel, what, uh, what, two years ago that. Um, no, that the mad that raising the mask mandates were, was a bad idea, but yet we're still doing the same thing, still doing the same thing. We're raising the mask mandates and we're saying, oh, it's all over. Go do what you want to do. Um, and. Um, you know, have fun and, you know, everything's all good. But if you look, 
and if you know where to look, um, things things haven't changed that much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. Uh, so so apparently the 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 the, the media company yeah, that was it's selective terrifying really... to know, but okay, at least I know right. Well, I mean, I mean, look, we, we get most of our news from the the media complex, and and they want us to look at certain things, and and if they say look over here, we all look over there. But this this is good to know because they're not saying look over here right now. And a lot of people don't don't understand that that um, like right now the focus is 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 where it all began, but nobody's looking there because we've got we've got a war going on, we've got other things Will going Smith. on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Will so Smith we've got a lot right. of other things going yeah, they, on. They want us to. Uh, yeah, we got the really Oscars must... going on, you know. Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff going on, and Justice, unfortunately, yep. you know, there's only a few of us that actually kind of love science and biology, and you know, uh, and kind of pay attention and read read the studies and the papers and. You know that are that are constantly coming out, and all of this information is being being revised and updated so quickly, and uh, the, you know the com the the layman the layperson can't even keep up with it. They're like, well, you know, you have all these numbers are changing and all this, but but science that's what science is about. When the data uh, comes in as it's being you know brought in, you up update and you readjust and you inform the the powers that be on what changes have taken place and you know uh, let them know that you know further changes are in the wind you know it's inevitable that 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 we're going to be getting more data and we're going to be adjusting as it comes in but you know we we have people trained to this this new cycle the where they're going no we need to know right now what it is right now but it doesn't work that way you know it's like okay like doc was talking about black holes We've had theories out there about black holes and singularities forever. And I don't think people really realize how how long it's taken. Some of this data was being gathered back in the 1930s, 40s, you know, and uh, the technology has finally reached a point to where some of these theories can be proven and uh, updated accordingly. But everybody wants everything in real time. And I think that that that's. Um, the the lack of patience is is, is uh, frustrating. Mm -hmm. Isada has a question here. She says, um, "If it is safe to discuss, what are your, your opinions on the effects of the inoculations?" I think she's talking about the immunizations. Rodney, is that something? yes? Yes. Okay. So same deal. Um, uh, just, just a talk about it, but you know, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I won't get too deep into it. Um, if, if doc uh, sets up a safe place where we can kind of get a little bit deeper into it, uh, I'm at his disposal. Uh, what, I mean, do I think that they're effective? Um, I think, I think one of them is very effective. Um, some of the other ones, uh, they they have some questions about, um, uh, the reason for the boosters uh, is because uh, the the protection that they offer wanes over time, and that's been proven. Uh, the papers are out there, um, so some people take it as as they are ineffective. That's not true. They give you protection over a certain amount of time. It's no different than than say uh, flu or uh, something of that nature. You know that you have to get them. Uh, within a certain amount of time, each uh, a certain time period each year, uh, and with this this thing coming out, and you're having multiple different strains, um, your um, your need for protection is increased uh, as the time increases and it falls off. So that's the reason for the boosters. But people are like, "Why are we having to get three, four, five of them?" It's because the the protection wanes. So the antibodies wear off. In other words, the antibodies wear off after a time, after a period that, of time. That well, that's a whole nother situation because the original, the original two strains actually antibody, uh, anti, uh, the antibodies were effective, 
this new strain antibodies are not effective and they've been actually taken off of um, the roster of, of, of um, efficacious treatments. Ooh. So uh, antibodies have been taken off the, off the, off the, the roster. I mean, every, and that, that just happened. Uh, I want to say the beginning of last month, end of month before. Ooh. So we've known that for, for a while. So, uh, Rodney, are you referring to the convalescent plasma treatment? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, gentlemen, we're, we're about a, at about an hour here. Uh, I, I need to fix something to eat and, and stretch out for a minute. Definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, Rodney, yeah, let's think about, I don't know, someplace we could talk openly about about this part of the science world. I mean, Definitely. Google Hangout. I would do a Google well, Hangout, Doc. Google Hangout. Well, you have uh, you 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 can get me at any time. You you got a couple of places to get me, and and um, you got me on Twitter too. So I I think I sent you my number. Okay. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. So you can get me anytime. You just send me a text and and say come on in, and I'll I'll be there. Oh, that's right. They they, they have a digital Twitter has its own digital forum now, so yeah, we can yes, talk over there. Yes, they do. Oh, okay. All right, let me give that some thought. Good time, you right. I have to I have to learn how to use it. Yeah, but, uh, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. Hey, don't feel bad. We the tech guys. We have to figure out how to use it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Guys the workshop on that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, though, um, t Twitter's just so toxic for me, man. They really go in, even on tech guys and Twitter. I'm like, really? I'm 53. I'm not trying to get jack dragged. Yeah, man. Right. I, I feel you, bro. I'm 38. Yeah. I, I feel you. I'm 39. They, they, I'm, even, I feel you. Mm -hmm. Even on the tech sector, which surprised me, they go in. I'm like, dude, I mean, I'm 53. I'm too old. What are you guys arguing over software or, or microchips or what? Yeah, look, Ooh, uh, everything. They don't like this, sir. Oh, they don't like this technology. Your technology stupid. I'm like, can yeah, we here's my favorite C sharp versus Java. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That, I'm like, this argument is old. Yeah. Every language has its advantages in Facts. different areas. Come on, man. Come on. Facts. Right. You they, gotta be gotta be versatile. You know what I mean? You gotta oh, be yes. you I gotta be right. open. I mean, look, this this is technology. I mean, and nobody's gonna stick with it. It's just like phones. Nobody's gonna stick with the same phone they had two years ago. And if you exactly. do that, you're gonna start slowing down. You're gonna, your ability to be able to use that with other, you know, other other forms of software is is gonna be hampered. Mm -hmm. So I mean, for people to be that locked in. Is is almost stupid. Oh, not almost. I think we're there. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But so, but that that's it. But like I said, I got a Twitter account. I just went over there. It was just too toxic. I'm like, I can go back to YouTube see. and get called a name. <laughs> I could go to YouTube and make my fifty cent a day right now, man. And yeah. Get called a name. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well. Twitter, Twitter's live, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, too well, live well. for me. But go ahead, Doc. Doc, if uh, if you need me, I I'm at your disposal. You just let me know. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming up, Rodney. All right, y'all. All right, Professor All right, AP Media. You guys want to get any last words in? Uh, just uh, cybersecurity. Get into it. There's a lot of money in technology. T any technology. Uh, cybersecurity is lucrative. Uh, you can get in and get some money. Let's get it. Okay. I I need to uh, maybe sometime soon I'll round all you guys up and we just have a, mm -hmm. a big tech. Round table where I sit with my notepad and listen to take notes hey, from you guys. You you got me keep it techy. You know the bunch, gay babe. I, yep. I'm I'm like Rodney. I'm at your disposal, man. You you do it. I'll be here. Okay, AB. That means you got to get in too. Yeah. Shout out All to right. AB. Nice meeting you, man. So AB, before you go, um, thank you, Professor Black Ops. The thing the thing you told us about in the beginning. The t t say what it is again. It's, what's it called? Uh, .NET Maui is it's still in preview version. It's not been officially released yet. You said Darknet Maui. .NET Maui. I'll type Dark. it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's still in preview, so um, when I when I say preview, it's not ready for production. Mm -hmm. Nobody, no, no, nobody's going to be putting this in in their software anytime soon. But we're te we're, uh, we're just testing them right now. They're supposed to release it next month, but uh, we'll see. Okay. There's a real long name, multiple application user interface Net is what Maui. it stands for. And .NET is the platform that Microsoft is, so, um, software is built on now. Go ahead. Okay, what does the acronym stand for? 
dot net by itself. That's just the acronym. I don't know yeah. what dot net stands for, but uh, Maui stands for multi platform application user interface. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, thank you. Know, peace out. I gotta, I gotta uh, check on my food too. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for coming to sharing that. All right, everyone. Uh, again, yeah, I just, I just don't want to leave this channel sitting for too long. You know, I, I, I do a lot of content over on, on my original channel. Ron Wills is coming over on uh, Thursday. We're going to talk about uh, the importance of pursuing your dreams. So that should be a fun one. Uh, pretty, pretty lighthearted. Pretty, uh, should be pretty educational. So if you're not doing anything, please come over to my original channel and uh, check us out. So uh, if you're watching this on the playback. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you want to put something in the tip jar. Uh, that information is below in the description box, and it's right there. Please consider joining the Big Words LLC uh, newsletter. And thank you to everyone who has already. I just want to get a few more names. There's a greeting, and there's a subscription button there at the bottom. This link is in the description box below as well and with that i'm going to sign off and then stretch out and then veg out for a little bit and then uh go and uh, enjoy some cigars later on so yeah i saw that thing yeah i want to thank all the guys who came up um i i, I kind of wish i started this earlier but uh this was a double header for me i did something on my sports channel and then i had to get out run some other errands get to the gym try to get back into the gym while we still can uh, based upon what Rodney said. So, um, but I'm going to try to be regular with these live stream hangout formats here so folks can just come in and talk about, uh, we could talk about what's new and folks can talk about what's happening in their field. So I want to do more of these. So anyway, uh, if you're new, again, please like, share, subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, oh, check out, check out, yeah, please, if you haven't, please check out my kidney uh, pre-records. I plan to do something probably in, in a live stream format about organ donation and kidney donation because a friend of mine, uh, her son, uh, has to have a second kidney donation. So that's where all that content is coming from. Please check that out because a lot of people um, at some point in their lives uh, develop kidney disease and um, they either have to go on dialysis or they pass away. So it's something that affects all of us um, or many of us at some point. So uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Be safe out there. And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, take care and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.